All right, well, let's begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who by your only Son has promised us forgiveness of sin and deliverance from everlasting death, strengthen us this day and this hour, we beg thee, by your Holy Spirit, that our trust in your grace in Christ Jesus may daily increase, and that with sure confidence we may hold fast the blessed hope that along with our mother and sister and all that we're related to as friends, at the last day be raised up with her unto everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, you know, it was about, it was a little over 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, and I, uh, I come home when I got to come home, and I'd only get informed on what was the latest developments. And so it was over 20 years ago, and I remember I was, at home with mom and dad, and and dad was out in the kitchen. Mom was sitting there doing something, and so he had something to tell me. So you guys can imagine this, because he's sitting there, and he pulls out his snooze can. He'd have his knuckle like this, and he's knocking the snooze down. He says, well, son, I want you to know that your mother and I went out and bought a plot out the arsenal. And he said, the only thing that worries me is which one of us is going to go first. Because I've been praying and I told her, Darlene, I hope you die first because if I die first and have you laying on top of me for all eternity, I won't be able to cope. <laughs> She'd say, Norman, you're a jerk. <laughs> Shut up. You deserve it. <laughs> and I think, and I think, you know, the moment she took her last breath and she got up to heaven and she saw him, I could just hear, Norman, you left me 20 years ago and you ain't doing that again. <laughs> and that's the truth. And it's not going to happen. So, you know, it was it was just a little over a year ago. You remember, a lot of you were there for Christmas, and they celebrated Mom's birthday a little earlier, and it was all the cake and the balloons and stuff like that. And then it was time for her to talk. You know, everybody got quiet. They were listening to her, and she looked at everybody and she says, "Well, I have this to say." She said, "I want all of you to be in heaven with me someday." And she said, "What I would say to you from my heart." Is get your butts back in church. And she says, and you know who I'm talking to. And then they all go, oh, we didn't get that on film. We got to get that on the cameras. And so, so then they all get their cameras out, and then Ma says, okay, I'll say it again, and I'll clean it up. <laughs> so anyway, if you talk to Pauline, you'll find out, of course, Mom, she had her funeral service written out what she wanted, and she almost had a Broadway play. She had people singing duets, solos, and everything else. We said, Ma, we're not singing. You know, we hope the little kids will sing Jesus Loves Me later. But So, but she then, I won't tell you her response to us about messing up her service, but what she wanted me to say here at the interment was pretty much the same thing she said at her birthday. So there's like 14 versions of this. So if you have the time, Pauline can show you all the versions. of. So here's what, here's what I want to talk to you about here. I'm going to read to you these verses because I work, I work a little bit at a university as a chaplain. And uh, one of the things they were doing, they would get the uh, professors up there and interview them about their Christian faith. And so I was featured one time with, uh, with, the, with an interview, and I was being interviewed. And they said to me in the interview in front of the other people in the chapel, they said, okay, so as you grew up as a Christian, what was the most influential thing in your life? And I said, I had, I had two Christian parents. And I said, they had their rough edges. And if I had a couple days, I could tell you all about their rough edges. How they would fight, my mother would throw eggs, there'd be all those things. You were all some of you were eyewitness of that stuff. I said, on the other hand, we always saw as kids how they would forgive each other and make up. So when they were fighting, they were fighting and there was a problem, but then there was always this healing, and their faith in Christ and forgiveness was bottom line. So I'm just going to read you some Bible verses here and then sum up. But this is how the Christian faith is. Because when mom says get to church, it's not it's not just getting back to the building and going through the services because, you no, know, it's why a person goes to church as their relationship is with God, what we do at church. So these verses here sum up what the Christian faith is. So the first one I'm going to read to you is from 1 John chapter 4. He says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Now everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love doesn't know God. Because God is love. So this is how God showed all of us what love is. He sent His only one and only Son into the world 
that we might live through Him. Now this is love. Not that we loved God first. Not that we earned God's love. No. But that He already loved us and showed His love by sending His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. That we should all pay for. But He sent His Son to pay for our sins. So dear friends, since God loved us in this way, then we ought to respond and love Him back and love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. So God loved us first, we respond. Hebrews 11, now faith, this relationship which is with God, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So we know the Bible talks about heaven, being with people forever, but that's God promising. Now mom, it's a reality. She's there with dad and all those that have gone before with their sins forgiven. So the Bible says also in 1 Thessalonians, Now brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you don't grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died once and he rose from the dead, and so those who believe that God had sent his Son to be their Savior and has their sins forgiven, the day will come where God will bring with Jesus those who have already fallen asleep in him. And according to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left on this earth until that judgment day, will certainly not precede those that are gathered to him already. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still on the earth and alive will be left, be caught up with them, and then to go with the Lord, and we will be with him forever. So don't be sad, don't be without hope, but encourage one another with these words. And then finally, this is out of Jesus' mouth himself. He had told his disciples that he was going to die. They were going to crucify him. But on the third day he'd rise from the dead. But they never got it. They were depressed. They were upset. Thought he was talking crazy. So Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now my father's mansion has many rooms. And if it weren't so, would I have told you that? Would I have lied to you? But I'm going there before you to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you too may be where I'm at. That's our faith. Christ died for us. Christ loved us. We're here for a short time in this world. And someday he's going to call us home. So Moss, you learned a couple of things just pointed out in summary then. She said this. She said there's two situations she does not want you guys to be in. She doesn't want any of you to be laying in bed at night or any other time thinking to yourself, I can't die yet, I can't die tonight because I haven't done enough. I've got to do more good things, I've got to do something so that God when I die will let me into heaven. No, forget that. Because nothing you could do, nothing I could do, nothing my mother could do, anybody, we can't get to heaven. Because if we could get to heaven by ourselves, Jesus would not have had to have been sent. So she wants you to know the security of knowing that you are already loved by God, just like we heard from 1 John, and that He's already paid for your sins. So she wants you to sleep good at night, knowing you could die today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, but because of that forgiveness, you're held, you're secure, because of what He did. And the other thing she wants to make sure you understand is that she doesn't want people sitting out there thinking, i got all the time in the world. To get closer to God, that's what you go to church for. You go to church so that you say thank you to the God who's given you all your blessings. You go to church to thank Him and to praise Him, and you go to church to learn more about Him. Because He talks to us through the Bible, and all the messes we go through in our life, and we know, Stroop family, relatives, we've all had our messes, and there's more to come. But God's talked to us about that because He loves us, and so how do we know what He says? How, does it, how do we know what to do if we don't listen to it? So that's when Mom says go to church. It's to grow in your relationship or respond to that gift, and to know the goodness and the security of knowing that you're in the Lord's hands. You don't have that much time. You could be gone tonight. You could be gone tomorrow. Mom, like I just told one of you, they said it's hard getting ready. I said, well, Mom didn't give us much time. She just up and died. Well, that's what happens. That's what, and it's going to happen with all of us. So that's what she said. Respond to this love. Know about it. Grow in your faith. She'll see you in heaven. I got to talk to her just a couple times. And I know the one night she had trouble talking, so I did get to talk to her the next day. And I said, Ma, I said, if I don't get to talk to you again, when you see Dad, I said, you just tell him we'll all be along shortly. And that's all true. 
but the confidence that we have and why we celebrate. Ma says, don't be mourning and don't be dragging your feet around. She said, make sure you have plenty of food. And Vince has bought enough food to choke a horse, so, you know, we'll be fine today. But she said, celebrate. She said, celebrate. And I, again, that reunion with my dad, the last thing I want to tell you about my dad is that, you know, I remember a time when he and I went to, to Kmart. And, you know, it was a Saturday, and they had all these people selling wieners and Coke and all that kind of stuff. And as we walked to the door, a young girl come running out, and she ran to my dad. She said, sir, sir, have you found Jesus? My dad said, he's lost? Where? Where is he? And a little girl sat there, and she looked at him, and she was confused, and he said, honey, he said, Jesus ain't lost. He said, he found me a long time ago. Because he said, well, he didn't tell her this, but my dad, as a lot of you know, was a hellraiser. And I just think my mom said, if you're going to marry me, you got to go to church. So that's her message, all of you, to grow in your relationship, to know the Lord's security, and to celebrate life. Because that's what's continuing there, life. And she does want you all there with her, and so do I. So with that, I'm going to continue with the formal part of the interment. And it goes like this. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I would not have you to be unknowing, brothers, concerning them which have, are asleep and have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so also all those who believe in him, he will bring with him. For as much it has pleased Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our mother, our sister, what she was to all of us, Darlene Stroop. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change her body that it may be like His, His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able to subdue all things unto Himself. And with that, we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with each and every one of you until life everlasting. Go in that peace. Amen. And here ends the formal service. Folks, we've been allowed to come onto the island together as a group. They do ask that we leave together as a group. So once everyone has returned to their vehicles, we'll leave in procession. Once we're over the bridge, you're free to go whatever direction you choose. However, the services will continue at Trinity Lutheran and Cole Valley uh, with a visitation at 1 o'clock and, and another uh, memorial service at 2. two. So at this time, this concludes services here today at the cemetery. If you'd like a flower from the spray, feel free to come forward and take one at this time. Otherwise, the spray will be placed on the grave. Uh, and at this time, you may return to your vehicles.